my name is Ntlantlan Logu. You can still call me Charles. It's an absolutely safe space here. Uh, today I'll be speaking to Michael Brown, who's a bassist in The Lion King. Uh, he'll be talking a little bit more about his self-transformation journey and how he really got through the really trying times of the pandemic when the whole world was shut down. Thank you for coming to my channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share with your friends all these wonderful stories we're telling here. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much again for tuning in. Uh, today I am sitting with the man himself, uh, Mr. Michael Brown. Sir, how you doing? Very well, good, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you so much for coming today. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, this, is an honor. <laughs> this is an honor and a privilege. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, you know, just like we, we kind of had a small conversation before, mm -hmm. um, um, I'm, I'm truly inspired by your story, uh, which we're going to get into almost right away. Um, you know, um, you know, you did what you did during a pandemic. You mm -hmm. did what you did with literally when everything and all the odds were against you and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I honestly cannot wait to dive into it. But anyway, tell me a little more about yourself. You know where you're from, how you started um, playing bass or when or whatever. Then originally from, from Chicago, um, and so I grew up. Uh, I, I didn't start playing bass until I was well, I started playing bass when I was a kid, mm -hmm. like about eight or so, and then I joined my first band when I was 14 mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was pretty much it and I went to a vocational high school mm -hmm. uh, called CVS Chicago Vocational High School and in that school being a vocational high school you could have taken wood shop you know pipe fitting any of those yeah. things of course I chose yeah. music because that's what I love and they had a program for that so um, got, got into the music program went through all the four years got my my certificate for uh, whatever hours you're supposed to have the minimum amount of hours right. because right. it's it's a vocational school. So. Yeah. Um, and then I went I went from there. I went to uh, Bandica College of Music for for music education. But you know my my love and passion was playing. So yeah. um, as soon as I got a situation where I could play, I yeah, just didn't. That was that was it. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing, man. And uh, have you always just played bass? Did you do anything else growing up? Um, oh man, I've had, <laughs> I have had every job under the sun. Um, okay. You name it, I did it. I, mm -hmm. I washed pots and pans for the Chicago public school system. I threw newspapers in my adult life. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I was a manager at Blockbuster when they still had Blockbuster. I mean that. <laughs> and I've done some of everything, yeah. but you know, the the biggest portion when I wasn't playing music was I was in banking. Okay. So um, I was mm. uh, I was in a trust accounting, and mm. uh, I was a team leader slash supervisor over an accounting group. So that's wonderful. I didn't know that about <laughs> you. So, so it's good. It's good to know. Um, and so when you joined Lion King, were you already playing professionally? I joined. The, it's interesting. Lion King was. It was a very, very fortunate transition. So before Lion King, I worked on Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus, which is, you know, big, huge circus here. Yeah. They had two units, the blue unit and the red unit, and then they both traveled by train. So mm -hmm. I lived on a train for 11 years. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. So, okay. Um, okay. That's quite a life. I was, I was with <laughs> them for, you know, 11, no actually 11 and a half years, and then... Uh, when they closed, when the circus closed completely, uh, I reached out to a friend of mine who's actually the bass player for Lion King on Broadway, Tom Barney, mm. and um, you know, told him, "Hey, man, the circus is closing. You know, whatever you can throw my way, you know, whatever contacts, you know, because I was I was really just looking for, you know, any kind of leads that I could follow up on because right. you know, I know that there's lead work to do. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't trying to." Um, yeah, I actually, like I said, I was just trying to get, do whatever I could do. It, yeah. it, that was it. Yeah. And so he said, well, you know, I can't promise you anything, but, you know, call this guy. Yeah. It happened to be the, the contractor for, mm. uh, and it just so happens that Gazelle, was it, was closing. Yeah. And they were going to be replacing, mm. you know, some musicians. Some people, yeah. And so, um, you know, I got the call. And, you know, I called the guy and, you know, sent my stuff in. I was still on the circus at the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a, it was, man, it was a crazy, yeah. <laughs> it was a crazy thing, man. Yeah. It was a crazy thing. But, um, you know, got through it and 
from here. Yeah, that's amazing, dude. Um, so you joined Lion King, you toured for, you know what, I don't know, two years, two and a half years, mm-hmm. and then boom, the pandemic closes. Tell me about that. The thing with that was nobody saw it coming. I mean, yeah. that's that's the, I mean, it, it was the biggest wake-up call in life it, it, in a yeah. lot of ways as horrible as it was and of course I, I you know my heart goes out to to anybody who lost a loved one right. um, you know there are folks that, that I knew personally that that succumbed to you know to the disease and, yeah. and lost their life yeah um, but for some of us who got through that and and it, it was just a big tap on the shoulder about look yeah. where are you in your life yeah what's going on with your life yeah are you, are you really prepared for what, what's coming, and, yeah. and, and how prepared are you? Yeah. Um, you know, we all left. We we that was South Bend, mm. and we all left with the thought that okay, you know, we're gonna be back in a couple of weeks. Right, right. I remember that. And you yeah. know, it was like okay, well, we're not gonna go to this city. We're we're gonna go to the next city. Right. It's like okay. And then it was like, well, we're not going to go to that city. We're going to go to the next city. And it's like, after a while, it was like, okay. This then is... they just started saying, hey, we'll let you know. And then the official, you know, letters started yeah. coming out yeah. saying, hey, you know, this is, this is a, wow. we're laying you off until, yeah. you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Off unemployment, all of that. And, hmm. you know, it, it is one of those things where, uh, I'm going to try to be brief. But for lack of a better explanation, it, it, it's that thing where people don't plan for their for their death, mm. and it comes suddenly and certain, and then all of a sudden a lot of things aren't done, and people are left. The people that you left behind mm. are left to scramble to put all these pieces yeah. together. Yeah, dude. Um, and so when the pandemic happened, mm. and 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 it affected my employment like that, mm. it almost felt like. I mean, because uh, you 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 know you you going along and you're making your plans based on the calendar. You know where you're going, and mm-hmm. you know maybe a couple three weeks, four months, uh, yeah. a month or two in advance. Yeah. Excuse me, where you're going, and so you're making your plans based on that. You're like, okay, this paycheck is going here, this one's going here, this yeah. one's going here, and then yeah. all of a sudden, wow. you know, and so it's like, okay, ho- you know, fortunately at the time, you know, I was working on building up, you know, yeah. you know, some savings and yeah. all these other kinds of things to yeah. get through. But man, it, by the time by the time we you know we got back, man, yeah. it was it was looking crazy. It was it was getting thin, <laughs> bro. It was getting thin. I um, know. Tell me about like, it. Yikes. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but also, you know, you get a new perspective on what you're doing. I think that's a perfect segue to to what I really I really was very impressed about. So. Obviously, I'm home, going through my social media and this pandemic. That's all we did, right? right. We were on our phones, right. Right. watching, you know, a lot of TV or whatever. So, you know, I'm going through my social media. I hadn't seen you in, like, I don't know, a year and a half or something, right? right? And boom, I see this picture. I'm like, that is no way that is Michael <laughs> Brown, right? I'm like, whoa, what's going on, right? Mm-hmm. And then I go on your profile. I see a whole thing. Mm-hmm. I see you've been out. I see you've been breaking out i see you've been taking really good care of yourself like um you know when we left the tour you know the mic i knew was a a, a nice well-built guy you Mm. know uh uh, very well fed Mm -hmm. you know i like like the way you put that i got you i got you uh, (laughs) yes i was very well fed. yes my my man was very well fed um and I'm like, you know, that's Big Mike. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. You know, we love Big Mike. That's Big Mike, you know. And then, boom, you're hitting me with some different stuff on the social media. And, you know, I think as, as a start to this, because I think there's so much to it that that is it's just so amazing to see that transformation. Where did it start? What inspired it? What was that spark? And how are you still going today with that? Um... Well, you know, I had been a gym rat for a long time, even you know, even prior to getting on. Actually, I had I had competed in a bodybuilding contest some wow. some some years ago. Yeah, years, years. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'd always been that guy, yeah. and I've always been trying to get back into shape. You know, this kind of stuff. Um, what inspired it was you know just 
I don't even know if I want to say personal struggles, but I mean, I, but the pandemic uh, gave way to one of the things that I like to do, which was ride my bicycle. And so mm. I was staying with my brother in Stone Mountain, yeah. and I just took to, to, to riding the bike, you know, for exercise and for sanity, really, because mm. there was not a whole lot to do. Right. Um, you know, nothing was really open. There was no places to go. If, if you got food, you got it to go, and you, you know. So I was like, okay, well, jumped on my bicycle, and I started riding at Stone Mountain, mm. and, you know, my first goal was to get around the thing one time, which yeah. was five miles. So it was right. like, man, I, can, you know, I remember yeah. getting halfway through and turning back around. Of course, hindsight being 20, 20 realizing that had I just gone the extra, like, Dang, I, I, I'd have been, right, right, <laughs> been out. Yeah. But um, so it was it was cool. But, you know, five miles became 10, became 10, 10 became 15. And then mm-hmm. I, I left off at like 40 miles, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in a ride. But... Um, I chopped that down to, to like 30 miles a ride, but that was that was like just about three hours on a bicycle, yeah. you know, going up and down yeah. the hills, and that's kind of what did it. And then hmm. you know, when stuff opened up, I you know, there's a gym that I like to go to and was was training there. Wow. Um, so you know, um, yeah, it was it was it was way past time. Yeah, way 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 yeah. way past time. Yeah, I mean, I noticed that even how you look, how you started to carry yourself, changed. Do you think it was just a domino effect at that point because you felt good, therefore you you look good, therefore you start to even feel and act different it's and then really kind of regard yourself like it's, that? Yeah, yeah. It, it is, it's some of that, but I was going through, I was going through some personal struggles, you know, myself relationship-wise. Mm. And so I was putting, at that time, I wasn't just putting my body back together. I was putting my whole psyche and my whole wow. thing back together. Mm. And what came out of it was, you know, at the risk. Well, actually, I don't care how I sound. Yeah. Um, I, I came, I came out of it back on my Alpha Square. You Come know, through. I just, I just, yeah. I just, you know what I'm saying? No, I no, just, I yes. I just, I just came, <laughs> yes. I came back out of it on my Alpha Talk Square. Talk about it. Talk about and it. And when I when I did that, I was like, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the guy. This. Oh, okay. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Uh, yeah. And so. What you see now is mm. me remembering. I know. Wow. You know? <laughs> and so that's uh, crazy, dude. And, and the funny thing about that is, as soon as I did that, as soon as I got back on my male alpha male square, mm. and and I mean, you know, that that term alpha male, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever. No, as, I, as I, on your I a got, game or, it, or right, whatever. Right, as yeah, soon as I got yeah. Back on my masculine yeah. frame. Yeah, things started to move differently. People mm. reacted to me differently, and in my relationship stuff you know mm. just cleaned up yeah. because when you when you make a decision mm. when you make a decision and you know what you want and you know where you're going yeah all of a sudden the stuff that's garbage starts to fall off anyway it's very true Mike. you know yeah. um when i decided where i was going for, yeah. for example one of my big things and you know this yeah we're out here on the road, right? And and you know, if you're talking to a free a female and you know trying to develop a relationship, well, how long are you gonna do that? And and you know, oh, you're yeah. gonna be gone and this, that, and the other. Yeah. And and in my space, I was trying to make concessions and make people feel good about that. And then coming out of that, coming yeah. getting back onto my masculine yeah. frame, and it was like, listen, this is what I do. Yeah, I'm not gonna change it. Yeah, this is a number three bus. Mm. It's going this way, and it's right. express. Yeah, it makes a couple of stops to pick up and/or drop off, but then it's going to pick up speed. You can either yeah. be on the bus or you can't. Yeah, somebody will be okay with this. Wow. One, I, when I when wow. I let that click, and it stuck. But I also had a standard for for folks, mm. and so I realized that when I decided what kind of man I was and mm. what I was going to be doing in yeah. life and where I was going, seventy yeah. percent of the women out here fell off. Wow! It's like you just you just wouldn't qualify. Yeah, <laughs> you just wouldn't qualify. Yeah, yeah. And do you think that 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 happens a lot when you start to really, I guess, tighten up on your knees and being clear about what you want, and then that helping you really just line up with the opportunities, the people, and the and really the surroundings that you Absolutely. want to be part of. Yeah. And and I'll go I'll go further to say that yeah. one of the reasons that um, we have some of the stuff that we have going on out here is because people don't really know what they want to do. 
Mm. They don't really know where they're going. And they haven't yeah. taken the time to decide who they are, mm. what they want, what they really need. Yeah. You know, there, there are needs and then there are wants. There are things that I absolutely have to have. Yeah. And that's that's bottom line. Right. You know, right. there's some things you, you, you sprinkle you, some stuff right, on. Right, right. You spray. Sure, yeah. But, but my needs must be met. Yeah. And at the point where you make the decision that nothing less will do. Yeah. Then as soon as you have somebody that doesn't meet those needs, it's done. Yeah. You don't have to him haul about it. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, but that's missing. You can be real and, right. and acknowledge that, you know what, maybe maybe this isn't isn't what's serving me or you or us or whatever. No, yeah. I just well, I mean, even before I can get there, I tell yeah. folks, you know, look, this is this is what I do, this mm. is and and that's that. So I I squash a lot of that stuff before mm. it even before it yeah. even gets started. Yeah. Listen, you can do this with yeah. me or not. Mm. I'm going to be okay. Don't worry about hurting my feelings. Yeah. Don't worry about, yeah. you know, just, I, I understand. Don't sugarcoat it. Yeah. Let it be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's that. One of one of the other things out of that, uh, one of the other things that came out of that was right. realizing that, realizing what I really brought to the table, mm. you know, as, as a man, not mm. just, you know, monetarily, this, that, and the other do I have any wisdom? Do I have any knowledge? Do I have any morals? Do I have any, you know, what is it that, what is the thing that makes me me and it makes me valuable wow. beyond anything else? Wow, dude. Um, it's fascinating to me how the this domino effect is so amazing how it started with you. Just And I've been really fascinated about that lately, like how some opportunities, you don't really plan to get to them, but by starting doing one thing, there's, there's just a, a metamorphosis that starts to happen where things of the same nature and the mm -hmm. same energy kind of start to attract towards that mm -hmm, one thing you mm -hmm. started with. So it's crazy to me to hear you sit here and now you think different, feel different and have remembered who you are as a man. And that started with you just picking up your, you know, the bike at your brother's house, doing half miles, 2.5, 5 miles. And then that kind of just, you know, cleaned up, you know, a little more. I believe that, you know, as, as black men, we do mm -hmm. need to take a little more you know, initiative when it comes to that, where we we do take that first step in maybe quitting something that's not good for you or limiting time with people that ne necessarily, you know, that don't necessarily give you any much to work with in terms of, you know, doing better about yourself for yourself. So that's kind of how I'm piecing it together right now. And, you know, of course, it could be about relationships. It could be about health. But there are so many things that I feel if you just started that one little thing and then take it from there you don't necessarily even have to know the whole down the line it's just you starting that thing that's really connecting with you that you really want so bad and want that change to see that change from you so bad and and how it just grows from there you, and you have to once you get to the point where you trust your work yeah trust your work i mean you don't always see you don't see results on day one i jumped on that bicycle and it took me, you know, however many months it took to, to get down. But the first week, first two weeks, you know, you don't see much but a bunch of sweat. Yeah. Um, but consistently continuing to do it, and yeah. then there, there'll be changes that'll come. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that as black men, and I'm glad you brought that up like that, um, we're missing a lot of the guidance. Hmm. Um, because where I came to, um, I, I I want to hopefully I'll be in a position to help somebody get there faster. That's right. They don't have to. They That's don't have right. to wait as long That's as I right. waited. They you know I can give it to them fast hmm. or faster. Yeah. Now whether they pick up on it, whether they actually do it, that's you know that's another thing. But yeah. having that knowledge yeah. and and you know for example understanding look you have worth hmm. just because and and you know you talk about social media man there's so much crap out here about yeah. these. About folks is like, look, if you're not making this much money, yeah. and if you're not doing this, yeah. and you're not, you know, you know, so the, the, an average guy, man, can feel like, oh man, this there's not much yeah. hope. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about you it, know, like, so, yeah, but that's yeah. not true. Yeah, you know, that's that's not true, dude. You you got worth and you you bring value, but you have to decide what kind of value you're gonna. True. You have to decide what you're going to, you know, and, and then be about the business. How do you, oh, you just took me to a conversation I had with one of my friends in, in Montgomery. 
Um, and you know, you sound you sound like I believe I sounded at the time, right? I'm like, you have to decide and you have to make these choices and you have to get up and, you know, hold yourself by the bootstraps and mm-hmm. you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, whatever whatever it's called. But like imagine somebody who who really has never had choice or much of a choice, mm-hmm. never even believed they can make choices, you know. How how do you force that turnaround? I mean, sometimes we stumble upon it, like we, we kind of talked about, you know, you start one thing and it kind of leads to another and it becomes a lifestyle. But take somebody whose lifestyle is not to choose, whose lifestyle is to just follow whatever the status quo is. And they've been made to believe and hammered in their mind and in their belief system that this is who you are. You will never change. Your daddy was like this. Your grandpa was like this. Your uncles are like this. You, this is it. Like, who have you ever seen in this family, in this environment, in this community become or turn out to be anybody different? You know, how how would you say they start to make those choices? The key is in what you already said. Mm. The key is in the environment. Mm. You have to change your environment. Mm. You have to change you can't be with people who don't see yeah. you know where you're going or what you're trying to do yeah. or, or, or or try to pull pull at you um i you know like i said i made a decision that the, if for example you know now i'm not in that situation i'm almost yeah. where you are right now yeah hey, hey. <laughs> talk about it but you know for me when I was when I made the change when I made my decision I said oh okay so a woman asking me how much longer are you going to do this was an instant buy mm. no discussions yeah no nothing because you lack the you lack the foresight yeah to see what this is where mm. it's going how big it is I'm I'm on the Lion King yeah there's only two of these jobs in the whole US of A yeah two mm. <laughs> two yeah. And that's I've it. never thought of it like that. <laughs> There's only two. There's only two. In the whole in country. In the whole country. Wow. I never thought of it like and that. And I got one. Wow. And so. For, <laughs> like what are you talking about? So why would I leave yeah. that? And if you can give me a compelling reason to even think about it. But mostly it's due to your selfishness. You just want me here. Yeah. And. I don't, I can fix it so that you can be here. Yeah. But you know, anyway, that's a long, yeah. that's a long story. So, so again, so you going back to the thing of, you just got to make the choice. You like make the choice. You change but the then, environment. But you and change then, your environment. Yeah. Because if you notice yeah. who you, who you hang around with these days is different from who you hung around with. Back in the day. Back in the day. That's right. And it, who yeah. you're around continues to perpetuate what you're doing and where you're going. That's very true. And so, you surround yourself with those people. Conversely, you get away from people who are bringing any of the other energy. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that winds up being difficult yeah. because you have to, you know, you get to see that old Homer Simpson thing where he, yeah. you know, backs into yeah, the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you kind of have to do that sometimes yeah. because yeah. Um, yeah. they don't necessarily mean bad. No. They're, they're, you know, they just don't understand this yeah and this is a completely different world yeah to to get up and 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 move every three two to two to four or six we have yeah. in the town yeah and keep doing it year after year yeah. after year that's not for everybody it's not dude it's not dude it's you know? not yeah yeah I see, I see, I see, I see. So, but I don't, I don't fight with people who don't see it. There, there are people who, mm. when I was in the nine to five world, yeah, I've got very few of those people as friends anymore. Mm. And here's the other thing that happens, and you'll, you know this too. Mm. One of the problems is, is that when you embark on something like this and you live out your dream, mm. you convict other people for not doing the same. Ooh. <laughs> hold it. Just just hold up. Just hold up. Oh my god. Yeah. 
Wow. And so those say that again. You have to say that again <laughs> because that was too good. And 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 I think, ha! I have so many of my friends that are hustlers and that are out here trying to do something that would love to hear that because that's a common conversation we keep having. Like, I'm doing what I think will motivate. I'm doing what I think would inspire. But you know, you see less and less people around you. You see, and it gets some. Sometimes it gets lonely because you're like, lonely at the time. dude, like I don't understand how I'm doing the thing. But like, and I thought it would be a group effort. I thought it would empower people around me. I thought it would, it would start to make people make moves as well. But like, how you just said it right now is just so crazy to me. Well, the the thing that happens is that Man. It, it's it's back to what you were saying about somebody being in an environment where they're telling people that you can't do this. Wow. You, this is not a good thing. Is you don't go after music. You don't go after dance. You don't go after singing. Those mm. things don't make any money. You'll be broke. You'll be this, that, and the other. And so, when you prove them wrong, mm. you convict them because perhaps they had a dream of their own mm. and they wanted to do something, and somebody told them. So they're just repeating a, a cycle that that they received. Yeah. But you broke out. Mm. You broke out, and so you are doing it. And so when you turn and look at that person, you don't have to even say anything except hello. And and that convicts them in their spirit for not sticking to their guns, for not going after what it was that they really wanted to do. Wow, dude. Wow. You're taking me through that whole, that whole, that whole thought process right now. The thing that happens with that, though, is that they then wow. become resentful. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it might not even be yeah. overt. Was, was yeah, right? it's just it's just it's just a little, you know, awkwardness, a little, you know, because all of a sudden, you're you're here. Yeah. And there, who wouldn't like to do some of the things that we do? Yeah. Go to some of the places that we go. You realize that we go to perform and play and be paid to be in places where people save up to go on vacation. Hmm. Hmm. You know, yeah. we were in when we were in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. You know, yeah. we were there, be getting paid, and we still had. We went to the Disney parks. Yeah. They gave us passes. Yeah. People, that's that's somebody's four five thousand dollar vacation that they saved yeah. up for you. And it's yeah. just this is our life. Yeah. So there's a lot to be grateful for. Yeah, hundred you know? percent, dude. Yeah. Um. And, and How do you stay humble? What that is, for the most part, is is a mechanism by which people say, okay, you're grandiose. When you come in, don't be. Be, mm. be less than that so that mm. the people who are around you who aren't grandiose mm. don't feel bad. Mm. And, and the perception is is that if you come into a room, you're, you're trying to do something and trying to... I'm not... I'm only being me. Yeah. I'm not trying to do anything. Yeah. If my presence convicts you you better yeah. figure out why that is that's right if my presence is convicting you figure out why it is yeah. if i walked into a room and i look good and the women are looking at me then i'm not being grand i'm sorry yeah. i'm not being grandiose yeah. i'm just being myself you feel diminished because you didn't think about how you were going to present you know how you were going to present that's yourself ugh, so, i hate to admit but sometimes that's very much so the, the, the case you know, yeah and so yeah. Why should I now try to not be who I am because yeah. you haven't taken care of being who you, you should are. be? Wow. Who you are, who you should be, and who you want to be. Wow. So I don't I, I am always grateful. Yeah. I am always grateful. And I count my blessings constantly. Hmm. I count my blessings constantly. When I'm when I'm sitting down, I you know, and I'm I mean, literally, I, I, I give thanks not just for the food, but for the being in a place where I'm at, wow. where I don't, I'm, I get up, when I go to the store, I grab what I want, I don't worry about it. Yeah. When I get sit down to a meal, yeah. I order what I want, I don't worry about it. Yeah. That's a huge blessing. Yeah. But I don't run around telling folks, yeah, well, you know, when I sit down, I, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah. I just live <laughs> the life. You just live the life. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I live the Very life. Very clear. Very clear. That's amazing, man. Michael, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you for sharing your story with me. And and um, 
and uh, I believe that this is going to be an inspiration for a lot of people that are that I'm hoping that this reaches. You know, uh, like you said, right now I'm not focused on audience. I'm focused on content and getting really good stories and sitting down with people that I find um, are doing a whole lot of wonderful things out there for themselves. You know, and for the community or whatever else is inspired for for that specific person or is inspiring for that uh, specific person. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for your time.